Hey guys, I got a request uh, by YouTuber Tom Boris, I hope I'm saying that properly, uh, who is inquiring about the use of IEDs or improvised explosive devices within Steel Beast. This is a more specialized subject than I wanted to cover in the beginner series, so I went ahead and I am making a separate video on it. Uh, with IEDs and Steel Beast, there are three real ways to detonate them. Uh, the first way is the simplest. This is the player using a trigger. So I'll show you how to do that really quick. Go to an obstacle, select the IED, and you can select, you know, what different type of uh, improvised explosive device you want. I'll pick, uh, uh, let's say, a uh, RPG-7. And once you've selected that, you go to set condition. This will really tell the IED through scripting how it's going to explode. So I'm going to say trigger number one is set. OK, OK, and now it's ready. So within the actual game itself, if I'm the blue player, which I am, and I press trigger one, which is here, it will explode. Now, in the control logic, telling the player for your scenario what your triggers actually do is very helpful. So to do that, you can go to control logic, blue triggers, click here. And select a name for it. I'm going to say detonate IED. Bam. Done. Okay. So that one's done. That one's pretty easy. Uh, the next one is still pretty easy, but there's a few more steps involved. This is going to be a victim-activated IED. Uh, the idea behind this is that you have a vehicle or personnel or something... Uh, drives over an IED or walks over an IED, doesn't really matter what it is, and whenever that enemy vehicle or personnel hit that IED, it explodes, mm -hmm. and they are really the trigger in that case. Uh, we'll do another RPG-7, simply for the fact that it is, uh, yeah, pretty light, mm -hmm. won't really destroy a lot. And uh, actually, missed a step here. Uh, so, in order to get this going, what you need to do is give it an actual zone. I went ahead, went to new graphics, rectangle, made a rectangle. Awesome. Cool. I'll call this IED2. Do some formatting here, make the text scale smaller. Now, this is, of course, uh, can now be used in the scripting as an actual zone. So, I'm going to decrease this, make it smaller, and uh, what you can do with this as well is, once this is in place... I don't want the player, when they load the mission, to see just some random rectangle in the middle of a town saying IED2. So you can go to select, set color and go to transparent. So when you're in the mission editor, you can see it. When you're in the game, you will not see it. But it's still there and can still be used for scripting purposes. Now we'll place our victim-activated IED, RPG7, set condition. And we're going to say that it is... Operational enemy forces in region two, uh, in region one, which is IED two, that's the region we just made, is greater than zero. So if any sort of enemy vehicle drives through this region, uh, they will be destroyed. And we can test that really quick. Uh, as soon as I put everything else out, we'll yeah put them in a Cougar M wrap. Why not? And I'll give them a marching order. Down the road to the south. Okay, so we've talked about the player activated. We've talked about the victim ad activated. And finally, there is uh, an IED, which is trigger activated. But And here's where terminology gets confusing. Not the actual trigger here in-game, but it's simulating an insurgent or some sort of uh, you know spotter or observer who is able to activate the IED either through a wired uh, remote, through calling it on a cell phone, whatever. You know, for the purposes of the simulator, it doesn't care. So the way to do this is pretty simple. We'll make another zone here. Call it IED3. Put that off to the side. Text scale small. Go to transparent. Drag this here. And let's see if I can move this around. It can be kind of tricky to move stuff sometimes in here. Uh, now we'll put a, another IED. We'll make this one very impressive and make it a Mark 82 bomb, uh, which is absolutely massive. Oh, yeah, 
forgot one portion. We've got, obviously, the zone. Now we need the actual trigger person themselves. So I will go into the map, or the 3D view. We can see that there is a little marker there. Uh, so that's actually not bad. And we'll place some sort of uh, infantry soldier right here. Infantry, rifle platoon, and we'll put them to a size of one and one. And we now have a person who can observe said IED. Now, there are various options for doing this in more of a counterinsurgency scenario where, you know, if you have, obviously, a convoy driving down the road and they see some random soldier sitting there, uh, you know, off in the brush. Shoot, if I can even see him. He's pretty well hidden. Um... You know, that's not necessarily very realistic based on the normal type of person who's going to use an IED. So you can uh, put them to a different party, for example, um, so they're not immediately shooting at them and have it triggered so that they, uh, you know, become hostile or whatnot. But for the sake of this, we'll just have them on the blue side. But we will change the appearance. You can go to options for this. Set look of infantry and shoes from all these different ones. Uh, Apocalypse put a very good tutorial uh, showing the differences in various rebels and insurgent uh, appearances as far as what they look like in the 3D model. I'll put that in the description so you can check it out. But we'll do something a little different here. Uh, go through this. Where is it? Where is it? Um, yeah, we'll do a uh, female Caucasian brown with a red dress. Bam, there you go. You know, definitely someone who does not stick out at all um, in this terrain. And who said uh, Steel Beast doesn't have some sex appeal, right? Okay, so we've got all of those things in place. So now we can go ahead and put in the, uh, shoot, ID, if I can get to it. Uh, we will do a Mark 82 bomb, which is probably going to kill our trigger person, but it is for the purposes of this demonstration. Now, here, we want it to explode if uh, operational enemy forces in region 2, which is ID number 3, are greater than 0. That's true. And we also want uh, unit 1-1 alpha, which is our trigger person, can see at least one enemy force in region 2, which is IED number 3, that one right there. So let me make sure we got all these. Yes, we've got them. Okay, and you click OK there, and what should happen is that we'll make another vehicle here. Cougar MRAP, and we'll send them down the road um, where once they hit that region, the... Uh, trigger person will be able to see them and detonate that, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, we've got mostly everything set up. What I'm going to do here is, uh, just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to set all of the forces here minus the trigger person to blind. And the uh, trigger woman here will... Uh, let me see, set fire control will be on hold fire, that way she's not engaging with her uh, anti-tank weapon system. Alright, and uh, let's go ahead and run the scenario and see how it works. Alright, we're in this scenario, we'll go ahead and get started. So, first I'll go into just using the mission editor, the general area of where IED number one is located, that is player activated using a trigger. There's detonate IED. When I click it, it should explode. Yep. So that works as intended. Uh, the next one will be a victim at, uh, activated IED, which will be from this vehicle driving over it. So I'll go ahead and focus on them. Click on proceed. They'll then drive down the road uh, into the IED. I'll go ahead and take over here. And, of course, that was a pretty small IED, so it didn't do a lot to this armored vehicle. But, um, as you can see, right, it will explode when any enemy vehicle drives over it. And you can go in the scenario and play through it 
uh, a couple of times in the editor and really tweak it so that it explodes exactly when this vehicle is driving over it. But that's close enough for simulation purposes. Uh, the final one we're going to use is the uh, AI trigger activated. So we'll have this vehicle move forward. We'll go to our uh, observer here. She should be able to see the vehicle when it comes forward. Yep, so enemy vehicle spotted. And then they hit the IED and it's detonated. Uh, and as you'll notice, right, they appeared on the map and the, de and the uh, trigger woman here actually saw them. So uh, that's the key thing there. Now, I like doing it with AI in that manner because it actually gives the player an incentive to... Uh, find whoever the trigger man or trigger woman in this case is and uh, be able to eliminate them. So that's the basics of IEDs. Um, I'll show one more thing as well uh, that you can use them within your scenarios that aren't necessarily simulating more of a, uh, a counterinsurgency operation. All right, so I'm back in the scenario editor um, and Another option you can use with IEDs is actually for uh, terrain denial or just uh, shaping pre-battlefield effects. So let's say, for example, that we are creating a scenario where uh, you have to attack with amphibious vehicles from south to north seizing this town. Uh, well, obviously in that case, right, it's not going to work if there's a bridge and you can just drive over it. So a rather simple thing you can do here is go over the bridge, go to obstacles, IED, I'm going to select the uh, Mark 82, because why not, set conditions, and we'll say that it explodes if mission time is greater than 10 seconds. Uh, I am doing that simply for the fact that uh, once we load, we'll be able to go and physically see the IED explode and confirm that 10 seconds later, it detonates. If you're doing this to simulate pre-battlefield effects, uh, the best thing to do is set it to mission time is greater than zero, in which case as soon as the mission starts, the IED will detonate and you'll have the effect of this bridge being destroyed. With that in place, we'll go back into the scenario and we'll observe and see how the IED works when it's placed on a timer. Okay, so we're in the scenario. If you look up to the top left, uh, right there, you'll see the timer. When it hits 11, it should detonate. And there it is. So, as you can see in this case, using an IED is a very simple uh, method of simulating pre-combat effects on the battlefield. So, I mean, you could go through, and if you wanted to make this city all war-torn and destroyed, you could place IEDs all through here, blow up a bunch of buildings, make craters in the roads, etc. Uh, it all depends on how crazy you want to get with it. Anyway, that's the basics of using IEDs in Steel Beast. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any other... Uh, specific subjects that you'd like to see, please leave a comment below. See you guys next time.